Amway. Amway is an American multi-level marketing company that sells health, beauty, and cleaning products. They offer people the opportunity to have their own business while selling their products and receiving a commission on sales. Recruiting people is where most of the growth happens. These people are called IBOs or independent business owners. AMO. AMO stands for Amway Motivational Organization. These organizations are separate from Amway, but partner with Amway to help IBOs grow their businesses through trainings, mentorship, coaching, and education. To my knowledge, there are at least 20 operating AMOs and thousands of IBOs who are a part of them. I was a part of an AMO called LTD from October 2019 to June 2021. So as you saw from that introduction, I was a part of Amway for one year and eight months. I got sponsored in October 2019 by my coworker, and I recently walked away at the very end of June. And these are just my thoughts, reflections, opinions about um, the time I was in Amway and specifically the AMO that I was a part of and how I feel about it. A little background on me, I was a librarian for nine years at a community college. And I have a handbag business where I sew and design handbags. I've had that for about six years now and it's still going. And um, while I was at work one day, I had a coworker come to my office and she was so excited and was telling me about this opportunity she had and about how she had this mentor that retired at 22. And I was like, he retired when? And I was like, well, I just want to meet him. I asked her, can I meet him? I didn't even hear anything she said after that because I was just so... Um, impressed by that so I was like well yeah can I just meet him and she said she would see if she can get a conversation with him going and let me know and so I didn't think much about it and then a couple of days later she texted me and saying that I could meet her which I you know now know are her uplines to see if um, it would make sense to for me to meet him and I was like okay sure so we met up and I, we, I went through what is called the process and you put somebody a a prospect through the process to see if it would make sense for them to uh, be mentored and get into these mentorship programs. And um, you don't find out, I didn't find out that it was Amway until about the third meetup, right? The third meetup, that's where you go to, and at that time it was live. So I went to a live session and they revealed that it was Amway that they were partnered with and they were using Amway to make the money and they had the mentorship piece along with it to help mentor you to become a leader. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I didn't really have any negative connotations about Amway. I didn't, I remember them when I was younger, but I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. So I didn't have the negative connotations going in. That's probably why it was so easy for me to get sponsored. I just saw it as a business opportunity to make some money, make some residual income, and um, just kind of add that to a portfolio that I already had going on. So um, that was kind of how I got into actually doing Amway and how I got sponsored. So <laughs> I, I'm not even sure where to start. I had been irritated the most of the time that I was a part of that AMO. And I explained that an AMO is an Amway motivational organization. These are separate organizations apart from Amway that partner with Amway um, to help people grow their Amway businesses specifically. And um, I was I was irritated the time from the time I actually got in because it was it was a lot of meetings and a lot of check-ins and a lot of it was a lot of things that I felt like I don't know if this is actually helping me build my business that there were some good things and some good habits that I picked up um they gave us a bookmark that had like our daily habits on it so read 15 20 minutes a day communicate with your upline um listen to um what they call audios or basically podcasts but they're they are only from people who are in the Amway business who have gone platinum or above. So um, the one thing that I enjoyed from that was the reading because I was reading all kinds of books and it gave me a way to actually get reading done every day. I mean, I read before, but it was like a couple times a week, but it gave me a, you know, a good plan to read every day. So that was something good that I picked up from it. But I felt like a lot of the other meetings and a lot of the other 
the conferences, I felt like a lot of it was a little bit excessive. And I felt like um, it wasn't really helping me. My problem was I needed time to actually build this thing. I felt like it, it was a business plan, you know, I feel like if you just have the time to do it, you can probably do it. Um, and I just felt like between, you know, the, the weekly meetings and the monthly meetings and the quarterly conferences, I was just like, I don't even have time to really do this. When I walked away in at the very end of June, I believe it was June 30th was the day that I walked over to my sponsor's office and I told her that I wouldn't be continuing on with Amway. And I also texted and called one of my uplines letting her know that I was no longer gonna be doing it. And they were both like, okay, you know, do your thing. It was no big deal. Um, my, what happened was my handbag business just blew up like I ended up getting my things in the mall in a few boutiques and I needed more time to sew because I was the only one sewing my products at that time so I needed that time back I just did not have time to sacrifice anymore to spend you know four or five days you know preparing for a conference and you know these weekly meetings and these night owls and all of these things that I was just that was just sucking time out of my life. I didn't have time for it anymore. So I just, after talking to my husband, I actually vented to my husband about how frustrated I was. He was like, why are you doing it? Like, why are you doing it? Um, I walked away June 30th. And what I was going to do was look for a different AMO to join and build the business that way because there was some things that some of my uplines would say, some of the leaders, the upline diamonds would say that I was just like, these people are really arrogant. Like they're super arrogant. They're belittling, you know, the way they almost talk down to you in meetings, you know, they people who aren't quite platinum yet or people who are almost platinum. It's like they bully them almost in these public meetings. And I didn't like that. Um, I didn't like that. I thought it was inappropriate. I thought it was unnecessary. And I felt like it was a kind of leadership that you get with someone who tries to manipulate you. So they publicly humiliate you so that you'll make sure to get your work done and so it doesn't happen to you again. A lot of that happened and I didn't like that. So I thought that maybe it was just this particular AMO that did that. So my what I was gonna do was go to a different AMO um, and I had met, while networking a lot, I had met people who were part of different AMOs and I was like, well, I'm just gonna see if I can reach out to them and see if I can just join theirs. Um, but I think it was July. Um, it was July. I ended up feeling so relieved that I didn't have to go to these meetings. I felt so, I felt like I had a weight lifted off of my chest because I didn't have to give up my Sunday nights anymore, my Tuesday nights anymore. I didn't have to attend these meetings and drive, you know, three hours to the next city because that's where the Upline Diamond was. So people were driving and spending the weekend there. I didn't have time for that nonsense. So um, I was relieved. I was like, I don't have to go to a conference no more. I don't have to pay all this money a month anymore. I was relieved and I was telling myself, okay, I'm gonna look for an AMO later. But I got to the point where I was like, I don't wanna do this. I don't want to do this. So at that time, um, I think I was on my phone on Google, the Google app, it gives you like little news tiles. So one of them was about the LuLaRoe documentary. And it says something like this MLM is getting sued, something like that. And I looked at the preview and I was like, I wanna watch this because this is like how I felt when I was in, you know, Amway. So um, I set my timer on my phone, on my calendar, when it was going to come on Amazon Prime. And then I watched it with my husband. And I, we watched all four parts. And I was just like, this is crazy. Because a lot of the things the women were saying, I was like, I felt the same way. And I, that was that. And I kind of was like, I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm not going to go back. And then I ended up on YouTube, which I'm on YouTube often. I was on YouTube and I saw Not The Good Girls um, video for why she left even though she was in the top 1%. And that caught my eye because a lot of the times people who speak out about, you know, Amway or any other MLM, they didn't get very far because I didn't get very far. 
the most I did was 300 PV and I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> You know, so it's usually people that don't get very far that usually talk about how it doesn't work. But she was in the top 1% of her MLM. And I was like, why did you leave? So I watched her video and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, she was confirming some things that I had already felt that I had already suspected. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing doesn't, it doesn't change no matter what organization you go to. It's the same exact thing. Um, the same exact um, behaviors and manipulative behaviors and all this love bombing, you know, stuff like that. So I was like, this is crazy. So I was trying to figure out, I'm like, why, why was I even, why did I even, even do this? You know, and I thought back to what my mindset was when I was, you know, introduced to our mentor. Um, I remember at work, I used to read Forbes and Inc. Um, magazine often at work. I was subscribed to them. So I would get them and read them sometimes. And so I, I would see people who were like in their 20s and stuff like that. These CEOs of their own Fortune 500s and they were doing all, and I was like, how do these people even get to this level? I just want to talk to someone who did this and I'm sure I will pick their brain enough to figure out what they did and I would apply it to my own business. That was my whole mindset. But because of the education process that they have, I remember thinking, well, you know, this could be another stream of income and I could, you know, do it that way. And I think that was the reason why I decided to even join it. I've been seeing a lot of people, you know, who are like, giving their experiences. And there were so many red flags that happened throughout my whole time in LTD. You know, there was just things I was like, this literally doesn't make sense. There was times where we were on these calls and it was obvious that the person talking just wanted to hear themselves talk, it felt like. I was just like, why am I here? This is not helping me in any way. I'm, I'm not the kind of person that needs to go to five meetings a week to do my job. Like. I understand and maybe they felt like the excessiveness of it all was because it was they're trying to show you that we're educating you so if you don't make it it's on you it's your fault but I've worked in education for nine years as a librarian as I said before and the one thing I've learned is that everybody does not learn the same everybody learns differently and I felt like a lot of these things were excessive I felt like going to fork conferences a year I was just like why do I need to go to four for a year that alone the conferences cost I think 120 and even when we went virtual because I got sponsored in October 2019 but you know March of 2020 was when like March and April was when the U.S. started to shut down you know, they started to people started working from home so and we still were paying 120 for conferences and all these meetings virtual. And I was just like, well, how, why are we still paying this much money? And I would get so upset. I would get so mad because I was like, why are we still paying all this money? And that's when I started to question everything. And I was like, I feel like these people are just collecting money. And I feel like, you know, we're paying $120. It's still a virtual conference, you know, and some people would like drive to their uplines homes to, to watch it together. So you're still paying to drive if you're driving to your uplines place. You know, you're still paying for a hotel if you're going to stay in that, if you're not from that city. And I just was like, this isn't, this literally doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So when I sat down and every time I got charged, because when it comes to membership to actually have access to the mentorship, um, the first two months are free and then it goes to $59.95 for six months. And then the last, after that, you're paying $89.95 for the duration of it. I know they have like a VIP level. I never looked into that. I don't know how much it costs, but it was more than $89.95. So I got to the point where I was paying $89.95 and I used to get mad every time I saw that thing come out on my card. I put it on my credit card. I used to get mad every time. I was like, I'm paying 90 bucks. I'm paying very close to 90 bucks to hear these people talk. And they tell you that that 
you know, that fee is optional, but it's really not optional at all. Because if you don't pay that fee, you don't have access to all the apps. And what you're paying for is a bunch of apps. You're paying for the messaging app, the conference app, the audio app, you're paying for the prospect app. Um, and that's how they communicate everything. Texting, they don't, they, yeah, they do text, but for the most part, when it comes to business stuff, you're on the app. So if you don't pay that fee, you don't have access to any of those apps. So I used to get so mad and I was talking to my husband about it um, because I didn't, I wasn't married when I got sponsored. I was single. When we got, when we were dating and engaged, like it got to the point where I was just so frustrated because one of my uplines was weird. She was very wishy-washy. Like she would say one thing to the other. Um, it was team meetings and certain team members were super arrogant. I was just like, what? what is the purpose of being like that? And I was venting to him one day and I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm paying $89, 90 a month, basically, um, to have access to this stuff. And he was like, you're paying 90 a month? And he was like, how much is that? And I told him, and I was like, yeah, everybody, once you get past a certain point, you pay that much money a month. And I was telling him that the leader of LTD, his goal was to get to 100,000 people by, I think, 2024, that was his goal was to be 100,000 people, 100,000 strong, that was the whole mission, was to get to 100,000 people. And so my husband and I did the math and he was like, wait, he was like, if 100,000 people are paying $89, hey Google, what's 100,000 times 89? 100,000 times 89 is 8,900,000. That's 8,900,000. 8, but that's just for one month, right? Because if 100,000 people are paying 89, that's 8,900,000, that's one month. So 12 months, hey Google, hey Google, what's 8 million times 12? The answer is 96 million. That's $96 million, even on the low end. Let's just say everybody, because everybody at the beginning doesn't pay. So let's just say everybody was paying $56 a month. Hey Google, what's 56 times 100,000? 56 times 100,000 is 5,600,000. Hey Google, what's 5 million times 12? The answer is 60 million. I mean, even if everybody was paying five, 50, the $56, $59.95, they're still making like millions of dollars a year from what I'm paying them. And that made me mad because I didn't think about it. And I know the why I didn't think about it. I didn't have time to think about it because between all the meetings, all the books, all the communication, all the conferences, the fact that I feel like these systems are created to keep you so busy to where you don't have just regular logic. You don't think about, you know, the fact that you're literally throwing money out of your, um, you're throwing money out the door every, every month. You're not really thinking about it like that. And I think that that's what the issue was. Talking to him really made me realize like I was and, and the thing is that you're not not told this because in the very beginning, during the process, they break it down for you and they tell you you're going to spend about what $2,000 a year, but you're thinking like, oh, you make that up, you know, by the time you go diamond, you'll make it up. It's no problem. That'll be like chump change. And you know, you're like, you know what? That's right. That's right. It's not that much money. But as you're actually trying to build this thing, they tell you that, oh, it's just 10 hours a week, build it in your spare time. It's no big deal. That is not true you quickly learn that if you want to actually excel in this kind of business, you have to do a lot and you have to do a lot of networking. You have to do a lot of networking and you end up being involved or maybe sponsoring people that just don't have any skills when it comes to networking or anything. So maybe that's why they had all those meetings, but you quickly realize that you have to give up a lot of time to make that thing work. And that's what made me mad. It was the money and it was the time because there was times where they would call a night owl the day before. And I was like, I don't have time to stay up. I was getting up, I'll get up at four in the morning. I don't have time to stay up till midnight. Like hearing you talk about the good old days and about how you grew and about how, that's great. I'm glad that you grew. I mean, and sometimes it does, but I'm not the kind of person that needs motivation every day. I don't, I don't need that. I need time to work on my actual business. So 
Um, my husband and I realized that it was a lot of money these people are making. These so-called leaders are making. And um, that's when I was like, this is actually really crazy. Because if, if you do go diamond, that's great. It proves that their system works. You're diamond, great. If you never go diamond, they still win because you're always going to be paying them this money a month. And you're going to recruit people and they're going to pay money a month. And that's the whole, that was the whole thing is that they win either way. They win, win if you go diamond and they win if you don't. I would like transparency. I would have wished they would have said because we had to pay $5 for um, the little training sessions that we went to. And there was one that I went to, a double diamond came in town and it was $20. We each had to pay 20 bucks just to get in to hear him talk. I remember that room was packed full of people and everybody paid 20 bucks. I was like, this money's got to go to this diamond. I remember thinking, it doesn't make sense. I'm sure this room doesn't cost $10,000. Like <laughs> that room was a big room and it was packed full of people. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure, I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the money they're collecting is actually going to the diamond. I wouldn't be surprised to the guy that's speaking. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's true. I watched this video from this young lady. She ended up going um, Ruby. I think she said her highest level of accomplishment was Ruby. And she was told, she learned that when you go platinum, you start receiving that money. And she said that um, all that money you're paying, it goes to the presenter. It goes to the person that's speaking. It goes to your upline diamond. So I, I wish that they would be transparent about where this money is actually going. Because I'm, if I'm paying you my hard earned money, and it's not working, the system is not working, it's not me, I can't read enough, listen to enough audios, it's not that I have a problem growing, it's that I don't have time to do what I need to do. And I'm not mad that I didn't make it. I don't, like, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I just wish there was more transparency and there wasn't a lie of saying, oh, the money is going to the room. That might be true, but the rest of the money you collect is, I'm sure it's going to the speaker that's speaking. And at the end of the audios, at the end of the audio, there's a disclaimer that says income earned from the speaker might be from different like business ventures or money they earn from trainings. So, I mean, that confirms that they're getting money from these trainings that they're putting on. And I just had a, I just had an issue with that. While I believe it's possible to go platinum, emerald, ruby, sapphire, diamond, double diamond, crown, all that stuff, I believe it's possible I don't believe it's typical and I don't believe that it's good success. I believe that it's a very stressful success to where from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, it is always something. It's either a downline trying to contact you, um, upline trying to contact you, you trying to contact people to network, you vetting people there's no rest I feel like you're just exhausted you have to give up everything else in order for this thing to work and um I think that that's just very inappropriate maybe this kind of business thing might be ruining families it might be ruining marriages because of how much you're putting into it there was one young lady that I listened to I'm gonna put a video right here she talked about how her and her husband were in the business, I think for six months, she said. She said that they started to bicker about the business because she felt like she was giving her all and she felt like maybe her husband wasn't giving as much. And they would bicker about it and fight about it. And she said that she felt like their relationship kind of at odds. And I feel like I could easily see that happening because if you're in it with somebody and the person you feel like is not carrying their weight or doing as much as you're doing, you feel like they're the reason why you're not moving on or the reason why you're not growing. And I feel like that can just cause a huge riff in your relationship. And the whole thing they preach about this thing is like, oh, you know, we get to spend time together and, you know, our kids get to see us working. And I just, I feel like it's not a healthy environment. I feel like what these people are doing is selling you a dream. Um, they're selling you the possibility of what your life could be like. And I really do believe, like I said, a lot of their income isn't necessarily coming from Amway. 
a lot of their income is coming from these AMOs where they're charging people like me all this money a month. So that's how these people are making, I feel like they're able to buy their big houses and go on all these trips. It's, it's not necessarily Amway money. I feel like, sure, they might be getting a little bit of money from Amway, but I don't think it's nearly no set high seven figures like how they claim. I think a lot of that money comes from the fact that the people, like we are their wealth. We like the people in these AMOs are the wealth. That's where the money is coming from. And that's why it's under the guise of helping people. Oh, we're going to help people become financially free. We're going to help them, you know, um, break generational curses, um, all kind of stuff, because that's what we do. And I don't believe that that's true. Um, there was heavy use of scripture in the AMO. And I feel like a lot of these organizations do that. I don't know why, if they want to come off, like maybe they're, I don't know what they want to do. But um, a lot of it was misuse of scripture. A lot of it was half use of scripture, was using scripture to kind of manipulate their point. And I'm actually someone that reads my Bible. I'm actually a believer in Jesus Christ and I actually take it seriously. Um, so when I hear people use stuff and I'm like, that's not even what, the, that's not even what that says. Even if I go look it up again, I'm like, that's not even what that says, not even what that means. And it's one thing when you kind of, misunderstand scripture and say stuff. I do that. I've done that before, but I feel like some of these people, they know what they're doing. You know, they're not innocent in what they're doing and I don't appreciate it. Ultimately, I just wanted to spread awareness um, about my experience with Amway, but specifically the AMO I was a part of. Um, I think Amway is just a business. I feel like if you want to sell products, then just sell products. You're not going to make a ton of money. But um, I just think that these kinds of, of businesses were not meant to make you successful. They were meant to keep you in a holding pattern and meant to make you feel like you're not doing enough work to actually um, grow your business. Because in their eyes, what they have done is proven. It works. We have all these diamonds. But the majority of people who are in there are not making any money. And I was one of them. So this is just like a, I don't want to say a cautionary tale, but I would, I would really, really be careful um, when it comes to these opportunities because they're not, they have found out a way to use words in a way that comes off way more glamorous than it is. Because even as I said earlier, my mentor was able to retire at 22. He wasn't able to really retire. He was just making enough money to walk away from like the job he had at Sunglass Hut and was, and then went into doing Amway full time. So you're not necessarily retiring. You're just switching jobs, basically. Um, and you're not, you don't really own your business, your contractor because if Amway goes down, you don't have a business anymore. You don't own it. You know, you're just kind of working for them as a contractor. You know, that's that's the truth. Um, these are my thoughts. Um, this is my opinion. My opinion is valid. It's my experience. It's how I saw things. And um, I just wanted to bring awareness to my experience. So I really want to hear from people who like accomplish platinum and above. I mean, I know that they're out there and maybe they don't want to talk about it. And I feel like that's kind of the, the kind of running theme is that a lot of people are scared to speak out. And I don't, they're scared to speak out because of fear of retaliation, fear that, I don't know what, but I don't think that we're the ones that need to be scared because we didn't do anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Matter of fact, I'm the victim. I didn't do anything wrong. I feel like the ones that need to be scared are the ones that are up th at the top taking people's money. So I, I really hope that people who really have a story to share and want to spread the awareness, I really hope that they speak up as well. Because I would love to hear from like a diamond that talks about the realities of being a diamond and how much money they actually made and where their money came from. That's what I want to hear about. Thank you for watching and I hope this helped at least one person if they were looking for something or wondering if they should do something like this. Um, this is my opinion. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.